Good afternoon, elected officials, distinguished board of directors, members of the Greater Elizabeth Chamber of Commerce, and guests, whom we look forward to as future chamber members. It is an honor to have you all join us virtually this sixth day of January 2021 for the annual State of the City Address. We anticipate you're enjoying your lunch delivered by one of our GECC participating member restaurants. If you've opted to receive a gift card, you should be receiving it in the mail shortly. And at your convenience, we encourage you to safely visit our local restaurants who all so desperately need our support. Keep in mind, today's event is being recorded and for your future reference, the link will be provided in our follow-up email correspondence as a thank you. This event would not be possible if it were not for Mayor J. Christian Bolwich, who afforded us with the privilege of hosting today's debut of the State of the City Address. Additionally, this event is one of the Chamber's few fundraising opportunities, and it remains successful in part due to your attendance and the generous contributions of our noteworthy sponsors and Business Expo virtual vendors. They are Northfields Bank, Seaport Estates, a project done by Pointy Developments, Elberon, Steve Hale's Office of Javerbaum and Wargraft, Commercial District Services, Marine Realty, New Jersey American Water, Jacobs Enterprises Incorporated, promoting its Point Grand Plaza. USA Architects, and Laundry Warehouse. At this time, to officially begin, it is my pleasure to introduce one of today's main sponsors, who also serves on the Greater Elizabeth Chamber of Commerce Executive Board, representing Northfields Bank. Here is Mr. Ray Cruz. Good afternoon, and thank you, Jen. And, uh... It's my privilege to be here today, and I want to thank Jen and the staff uh, for actually navigating through a very challenging year that we had, and they did an exceptional job, okay? As one of the main sponsors, uh, you know, I have quite a few minutes, few minutes to speak, so I have like 10 pages of notes. Just kidding. I know we want to hear from the mayor, so I'll keep it brief. Um, at Northfield Bank, if you're not aware, we were established in 1987, uh, and we have been providing financial solutions for both retail and commercial customers, including lending, cash management, and investment products. We work as a team to provide you with exceptional customer service and do not nickel and dime you with fees, like most banks do. At Northfield, you will have access to a personal banker who will be your main point of contact. So if you have an issue, you're not calling 800 numbers, getting the runaround, you have access to us directly. So that'll save you some time and uh, I'm sure you're gonna, if you check us out, you're gonna experience the difference of banking with us. And I just wanna say about the chamber, I'm involved with a lot of chambers. The Elizabeth Chamber is one of my favorite chambers, not because I'm on their board, I'm the treasurer for the chamber. I think the people that are involved in the chamber make it a very vibrant, networking, uh, fun to be with. And over my past years, I've always enjoyed all the networking events and all the holiday events that we've had with the chamber. So we're very proud at Northfield to be part of the Elizabeth Chamber and the community that we serve. And right now, I wanna introduce one of my partners, actually, Ms. Eric Larson, who's in charge of our commercial lending at the bank. Thank you, Ray. Uh, in charge of, no. I'm just one of the people that works in the community trying to help everyone. Uh, I hope everyone had a happy and healthy holidays. My name is Eric Larson. I'm a senior vice president and a team leader of commercial lending for the New Jersey East team here at Northfield Bank. Northfield Bank offers a full array of commercial loans, such as multifamily, investment real estate, lines of credit, term loans, and owner-occupied commercial mortgages. We are a local bank that understands our markets and clients' needs. And our credit approval and credit process are made locally with a team of seasoned individuals that understand the New Jersey and especially the Elizabeth marketplace. I would like to thank the staff at the Chamber and their, for their continued support, and I hope everyone has a safe and successful 2021. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Mr. Cruz and Mr. Larson. It's an honor to have you as one of our main event sponsors, and we appreciate the continued support that you've given us year over year. So thank you so much for joining with us today. Thank you. I am proud to introduce another one of today's main event sponsors. They are Seaport Estates, a project done by Pointy Developments. Join me in welcoming Ms. Lauren Ashley Beck, Director of Marketing at Pointy Developments. Hi, my name is Lauren Ashley Beck and I'm the Director of Marketing at Pointy Developments. It has been a huge honor to have been able to sponsor such an amazing event, State of the City, by our outstanding Mayor, Chris Bullwage. Mayor Bullwage has been a true leader, a tremendous role model, and has done a magnificent job in helping everyone during this exceptionally difficult year. Let me take a brief moment to present the Seaport Estates Project by Pointy Developments. Pointy Developments was founded in 2014 by Hanania Bennett, an NYC-based visionary developer with a mission of creating state-of-the-art residential projects while keeping them reasonably priced. The Seaport Estates Project got off the ground two years ago with the immense support of the wonderful city of Elizabeth. With the help of attorney Stephen Hell, a lifelong chamber board member, and architect Greg Waga, a lifetime chamber member himself, this project is finally coming to fruition. The Seaport Project will host 38 beautiful two-family homes in the heart of Elizabeth City. It will feature many amenities and perks. Among those, its unparalleled modern design, its distinctive sense of privacy, and its close distance to parks and malls. It will be available for sales in the first half of 2021. This project is currently mid-construction by the famous ACC Construction Group, owned and directed by Jeff Lopez, who was born and raised in this amazing city of Elizabeth. For more information, you can visit the website at seaportestates.com. I'd like to take a brief moment to give recognition to the City of Elizabeth Building Department officials for making this project a possibility. Despite all of the encountered hardships during this uneventful year, their hard work is sincerely appreciated and is to be admired. At the same time, we would like to give a shout out to the amazing people at the top of the chamber, the event coordinators. Starting by the president and CEO, Jennifer Costa, along with her amazing team, Yasmin Fisher, Lori Paulella, and all other behind the scenes members that I'm sure worked very hard all year round. Their warm and sincere compassion towards the growth and development of the city, even throughout such a strenuous year, was felt by all. And despite the virtual nature of this and all of this year's events, they have managed to leave everyone feeling a part of this awesome community and are eagerly looking forward to getting together again safely in the new year. May 2021 be an exceedingly successful year to all members and may the mayor and all of his constituents see a prosperous year with only growth, success and victory and returning life to normal as the hardworking residents of the city deserve. Happy New Year and cheers to 2021. You are welcome to learn more and directly engage with all of our sponsors in the GECC Business Expo Room, which can be found using the link listed below. To continue on with today's program, it has been an honor that throughout my educational studies and past professional experiences, having a deep focus to one day empower people and nurture them through change. Never did I think that life would bring me full circle to the moment beginning back in January of 2020. As my first year leading this chamber as president and CEO, never would I have begun to imagine that as a novice, I would be leading our chamber through as we all would be living through one of the world's most challenging moments in modern day history due to the worldwide pandemic of COVID-19. In 2020, we faced day-to-day -day reckoning with the reality of life and unprecedented business hindrances during this horrific pandemic. But a remarkable thing has happened. We haven't just merely managed to survive, we're coming together, rethinking, repositioning, and rebuilding our companies to thrive. As challenging as 2020 has been, it has bred business operations, safety, and innovation on an immense scale. Without ceasing operations or services, 
the GECC remains open and ongoingly continues to help our members. In fact, we increased our communication throughout the pandemic, enhancing our website visibility, growing engagement to over 10,000 page views, sending email correspondence, which over 30,000 opened, and over 2,900 click-throughs proves that our chamber is serving important information to our members and that we're well above industry average with direct email campaigns. We also strive to continue to grow our social media platforms with daily updated information, including but not limited to the business hours of operations and individual promotions of our chamber members. The GECC remains up to date, joining a coalition of New Jersey State Chambers where weekly conference calls were conducted to facilitate joint relative information that affected our chamber members. We held various webinars throughout 2020, bringing virtually together over 1,500 participants to actively keep our members up to date with the latest information, providing vital resources on grants, loans, executive order guidelines, and business resources. Throughout the shutdown, and even until present day, our chamber has worked closely in partnership with the NJEDA, the SBA, the County of Union, the Union County Economic Development Company, City of Elizabeth, the Elizabeth Development Company, complete with providing Q&A opportunities with top level representatives to help clarify all the confusion. Not forgetting to mention, we also quickly adapted to the COVID restrictions and still provided monthly virtual networking opportunities to keep us all connected via this new world we live in called Zoom. We didn't just stop there. We extended our resources to help our members in saving money by providing them, upon request, their own Zoom channel for their individual meetings and business needs. Our chamber also partnered with vital entities such as Trinitas Regional Medical Center on helping provide resources on workplace mental health for employers and employees. We also worked with Kane University and its business school, providing techniques on how to shift your business online using e-commerce strategies. And this past year, while the world came to a standstill, your chamber was actively working behind the scenes. The chamber sought there to be an additional need for different levels of membership. Thus in 2020, the Greater Elizabeth Chamber of Commerce launched two new levels of membership. The student professional member, applicable for students that are 21 years and older or within their first year of being a college or university graduate or a new alumni. We also started a new startup chamber member level. And this is applicable for new companies that are trying to get their operations off the ground, needing our consulting services to help them launch their new endeavor. The Greater Elizabeth Chamber of Commerce also mobilized its chamber foundation. The chamber connected local nonprofit members with a variety of goods and services. Through a coordinated effort, we facilitated the giveaway of baskets and dozens of winter hats, scarves, and gloves in partnership with the Siemens Church Institute through APM terminals, making various donations to Proceed, Jefferson Park Ministries, Josephine's Place, Interface Housing, The Leaguer's Head Start, and also the Chamber is currently working with the County of Union through CARES Act grant to help offset expenses for some of our members in providing additional PPE, which will be arriving soon. And if all that wasn't enough, 
We managed to maintain active with the ELC of Union County. We virtually held the annual legislative breakfast with the Union Township Chamber of Commerce and even safely hosted in person our very own first golf outing. I'm honored to be a part of this business community that has come together and lifted each other up during the most difficult of days. And as we continue to navigate through these unsurmountable times of uncertainty, affecting us all in such a very personal way, from our family lives to the stability and future of our businesses, we look around and we can be assured that this pandemic is not merely affecting us personally or just within the city of Elizabeth or the County of Union, but evidently it is posing challenges for every person, every business and country around the globe. It is for this reason, we, your chamber, remain committed now more so than ever to serving all your business needs as together we forge ahead. Thank you for entrusting me with the continued privilege of leadership in serving you and your companies. To all of our chamber board of directors, please know on behalf of our members and staff, we are forever grateful for your support and encouragement throughout the year. Thank you for your honesty and guidance as we all chartered new courses. And last but not least, to our staff, Yasmin, Lori, Veronica, and Dorian, we're so grateful for your teamwork, going above and beyond doing whatever it takes to help service our members, despite how difficult this time has been for each one of us. And now, without further ado, the highlight of this afternoon. I know he isn't big on long introductions. However, his leadership under these unyielding circumstances this past year, now more so than ever, definitely deserves it. As he has guided us through one of our most challenging years in the history of our great city. He's worked round the clock, been available at any given moment, mobilizing every possible resource, not just for our city's residents, but for our business community as well. And all of that is a mere understatement. As busy as he was, Mayor Bulwidge has always been gracious with his time and personally attending our virtual events. Throughout the pandemic, making himself always available and directly engaging with our business community. Ladies and gentlemen, the man that needs no introduction, Mayor J. Christian Bulwich. Members of the City Council, members of the Board of Education, members of the Greater Elizabeth Chamber of Commerce, friends and family, and members of the greater community of the City of Elizabeth. First, I want to thank Jennifer Costa for all of her leadership at the Chamber of Commerce over this past year. Her and the Board of Directors have done a great job in bringing the business community together during this pandemic. And as all of you know, this past year has posed challenges that we have never experienced. It's created difficult decisions and unthinkable loss. But these obstacles also defined and reinforced the strength that we have in ourselves, in our families, and in our communities. And Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, the ultimate measure of a person is not where they stand in moments of comfort and convenience, but where they stand at times of challenge and controversy. So when faced with unimaginable financial and employment hardships, educational disruptions, health and safety concerns, the city of Elizabeth developed a plan. We acquired personal protective equipment we partnered with the Union County Board of Commissioners to provide access to testing and supplies. We coordinated with Kane University and the COVID and the county implemented a COVID-19 testing site. Thousands of residents and employees received free COVID tests at Kane University, 
at the Dunn Sports Center, at the Exlaven, the O'Donnell Dempsey Towers, Peterstown. We also had free antibody tests that were offered at the Mickey Walker Center. And supporting these efforts, we know we collaborated with Freeholder and now Commissioner Sergio Granados, who helped bring the World Central Kitchen here, worked with the International Rescue Committee to provide meals. Together, we distributed over 305,000 free meals, 6,900 free produce boxes, and more than 125,000 free face masks during the height of the pandemic. Realizing the importance of personal protective equipment to safeguard our essential employees here in the city, we ordered masks and gloves, isolation gowns, face shields, disinfection sprays, thermometers. We tried to maintain a healthy working environment. We asked the police officer roll call, which requires individuals to be together in close proximity to suspend the roll call, receive assignments and updates electronically. Single officer patrols were implemented to avoid group interactions. To prevent further spread, group meals were suspended at the fire department. Social distance was enforced. And along with frequent hand washing and a disinfection of common spaces, when the outbreak began, we closed the parks and playgrounds. We took the basketball rims and removed them to protect public health. We went after grant funds for the pandemic continues to produce ongoing significant and unexpected costs. And through the coronavirus emergency supplemental funding, we received $377,000 for vital supplies, equipment, overtime to prevent and prepare our response to this crisis. Through Union County CARES Act, the City of Elizabeth received funding to increase our interoperability, enhancing preparedness, improving local and regional response. And starting in March, for many months that followed, the sound of sirens could be heard throughout our entire community. Our first responders and frontline workers, among the best there is to offer, strength and commitment and excellence. Safety protocols were activated. Decontamination tents at Trinitas. Vehicle decontamination practices applied after each COVID response. Mobile facility ionization sanitizers were incorporated at fire stations. The effects of this pandemic continue to devastate lives. Loss of employment and income, health care, generations of businesses are forced to close. Entertainment venues, fitness locations, malls shut their doors. Medical procedures, checkups were delayed. Schools were transformed into virtual learning. Supply chains interrupted. Everyday items vanished overnight. Family, friends, and loved ones were isolated. You know, we all understand the impact of this loss, so we had to try some innovative approaches to implement new plans and utilizing the best practices of other communities. The City Council immediately passed an ordinance to support outdoor dining and expand services, approve street closures and sidewalk cafes. We worked with the business owners on compliance issues. We addressed concerns, investigating complaints, and identifying violations that pertain to the executive orders issued by the governor. We formed a task force of the ABC, the Central License, Health, Fire, Zoning. The police department worked hand in hand to resolve compliance issues, to enforce the orders, and ensure that proper protocols were followed. And technology continues to evolve and expand the problem-solving capabilities. And during a pandemic, this was instrumental to some success. Utilizing our municipal drones, the police department, the city was able to implement a successful public awareness program. The drones were deployed along busy corridors, heavy populated areas, pre-recorded messages told individuals in violations of social distance guidelines to separate, don't congregate, Advise that non-compliance of social distance, you could receive a summons of up to $1,000. The drones asked people to comply with mask requirements, social distance, gathering limits throughout the community. These were valuable tools 
in our fight to help stop the spread of the virus. But they're not the only ones. We train 25 contact tracers here in the city to work with the county and state personnel to track potential exposures, to provide education access to resources, and to help flatten that curve. However, that COVID fight cannot be won alone because it requires, most importantly, community responsibility. The willingness for all of us to participate in a solution. The willingness of everyone to share our goals. The Office of Public Health, in coordination with our public health nurses, continue to lead this effort. Currently, we have more than 15,000 cases in the city of Elizabeth that we have closed. We have less than 1,000 that remain open that our contact tracers are following. And sadly, 470 Elizabethans have passed away. We presented, we made presentations by our health educators to seniors and block watch groups. We distributed meals and wellness calls to seniors and at-risk residents. Homeless prevention and security deposits. We helped with rental assistance. We established a hotline answering questions, follow-up calls to individuals who recently tested positive. The communicable disease and reporting and surveillance system, supporting effective case management and service delivery. You know, updates and resources on our website, best practices for prevention, mental health impacts, coping mechanisms, safe disinfection. As COVID-19 related demands increased, our dedicated employees here continue to perform their responsibilities with excellence. We developed remote working capabilities, implemented to maintain safer environments. We modified office spaces. We established a flex scheduling process. 2020 is definitely gonna go down in history as a memorable year. And I know there's many of us that wanna forget it, but it's through our strength and our hope that we can all draw inspiration from each other. We can create opportunities for positivity and growth and success. You know, even though we've reduced our revenue as a result of extended closures and restrictions, we've increased costs to, do, to uh, COVID-related response, preparation and prevention. The city continues to apply sound fiscal management to implement cost-saving measures, applying responsible operational approaches. And because of that, Moody upgraded us to a AA2 rating with a stable outlook. We ensure our municipality is considered for future opportunities and funding and our city coordinated with the county and the state in the 2020 census complete count. We received $80,000 in grant funds, implementing extensive outreach, public awareness campaigns, and encouraging the completion of the surveys necessary for an accurate count. Shutdowns and closures impacted industries around the world. And among the hardest hit were the travel and tourism community. Along with millions throughout the world, we all are paralyzed by the impact of this virus. Yet the Greater Elizabeth Chamber of Commerce and the Elizabeth Destination Marketing Organization immediately began to reimagine the in-person gatherings, maintaining connections, sharing information virtually. They've increased the outreach by adding 66 new chamber members. They secured 1,500 registrations for virtual events and meetings, and more than 10,000 views on social media. They've improved access to resources. They worked with hotels and restaurants and transportation outlets, countless check-ins, health and safety measures, enhancing visibility and elevating awareness. They got more than 65,000 views at the GoElizabethNJ.com. They worked with adopting a city ordinance to create a special improvement district promoting tourism. Liberty Hall, which years ago used to be part of Elizabeth, was awarded the best of the best by the American Business Association. And Edmo will be featured on the United Airlines mobile app. And in coordination with the Economic Development Arts Council, the Union County Board of Commissioners, the Union County Heart Grant, the Elizabeth Renaissance Foundation, and Harbor Consultants, we developed two new street murals. They were completed on Julian Place and Broad Street. 
Julian Cain, who Julian Place is named after, was a respected member and the president of National State Bank here in the 1800s. Elizabeth's renaissance is underway, revitalizing Midtown. These artistic expressions, which were created by Juvenel Torres and Dario Scolis, celebrate our rich history. They showcase the talent, creativity, dedication of our residents, our local artists, and our partner organizations. Business assistance throughout our community is always vital, but COVID-19 created an added sense of urgency to remain open and profitable, to retain employees and pay salaries, health insurance, providing service and products to supplies to consumers. The Elizabeth Avenue Partnership is helping merchants stay informed and operational. They keep their customer base sound and safe. They provided notifications for funding opportunities on their website and social media. And they were creative. They started a restaurant takeout pickup delivery flyer so people knew what was open and how to get restaurant food. They coordinated with the health department on secure reopenings. They reiterated mask requirements and hand washing, social distance. And our shops and restaurants in our city, we waived the fees for outdoor dining. We provided assistance with permits. We worked hand in hand with the partnership. Impressively, 28 new businesses opened on the avenue, including the FJ Masters Barbershop, a global uh, supermarket, Cuscatalan Express and Clothing. They've increased some opportunities for our residents, including the creation of jobs. They provided and participated in a distribution of more than $4 million in grants and loans from the Elizabeth Development Company. They remain a vital resource for our local business. They help provide more than 1.5 million in CDBG grant funds, another 1.5 million in support for the urban enterprise zone community, 750,000 in neighborhood revitalization tax credits, assistance for PPE and COVID relief in the historic Midtown and Elizabethport communities. And in partnership with the city's department of planning and community development, they secured another $396,000 in neighborhood preservation programs for COVID assistance. They created opportunities, increased access to resources, and they strengthened our foundation. They distributed to business. These funds included some rent and mortgage assistant payments, payroll, personal protective equipment. And when the virus landed here in the United States, there was limited information, as all of you know. It was difficult. The lack of understanding, what was going on, how was it going to impact us, the inability to predict the magnitude of infections, the feeling of helplessness on what was going to happen, the compassionate care we needed for the suffering. So we developed and we worked with Trinitas Regional Medical Center because we relied on their talented physicians and their nurses, the professional staff who are no strangers to sacrifice and to remain vigilant. They treated and discharged over 2,000 patients. They supported our police and fire and EMS responding to COVID cases. They were leading our state with COVID-19 vaccinations for medical personnel and at-risk employees that started last week. They demonstrated the progress in the fight against the virus. And Trinitas continues its commitment to growth, completing $4 million rehabilitation of the former Election Brothers Hospital, featuring a 98-bed inpatient facility, specializing in behavioral health for adults and children and family, enhancing services, and the capacity for more than 200,000 visits received annually. Trinitas has been recognized for their commitment to innovation, to quality service. Health grades awarded the Medical Center with all three excellence awards in women's care. Advancement, contribution, recognized in their cardiac and orthopedic divisions. Tremendous demands are being placed on our health care system, including the need for more space to assist and treat patients. Trinitas recognizes the vital role available. Facility capacity plays now more than ever, and we continue to take action. 
as they broke ground on a new medical arts building. This will feature a 19-station dialysis center and physician offices, women and pediatric health center, 300-car parking garage on its main campus. Providing additional levels of protection for our residents, they have done free flu shots, adult child vaccinations. This pandemic has turned our world upside down. And as we all try to hold on to some sense of normalcy, it's important to note the significant impact on our young people who continue to cope with an array of loss. A transition to virtual learning. All these kids now sit in front of a laptop. They deal with isolation. They're reducing their peer connections. They've lost their friends. They deal with them on phones and texts. Limited access to dietary and supplemental food resources. So our office on youth worked with the Elizabeth Board of Education. We applied out-of-the-box approaches to assist what we all call a new normal, supporting nourishment needs, strengthening growth and development. We started a grab-and-go food distribution, program graduations, virtual SOAR and safe haven summer camps, increasing opportunities and providing inspired activities. Our Department of Recreation continued to do their part through available technology, increasing safety measures, outreach and public awareness, raising outlets to enable uninterrupted service delivery, improve the quality of life for our young people. And when the warmer weather arrived, the public health emergency remained in effect, and many residents were home without air conditioning, limited places to go for relief from the temperature. So we looked to guidance from the CDC and from the state, and also from our own health department. And by looking at these successful measures, and including mask requirements and the enforcement of social distance, we had zero reported incidents when we opened our pool and our spray parks we opened our playgrounds, and they remained open for three months, providing safe locations for our children to get away from the pandemic and once again to be a kid again. Making sure our children did not go hungry was always important. We worked with the Elizabeth Board of Education to make sure there were drive-by and pickups for meals, supply chains that were disrupted, and empty shelves that were plaguing stores raising the cost of essential goods. We remain committed to addressing this problem through the summer food distribution program. We fed over 2,000 youth in partners with the Board of Education, our grab-and-go meals at school and play, our collaboration with the Union County Boys and Girls Club, the United Youth in New Jersey, and the Legends of Youth. We did Zoom and Microsoft team meetings to online classes for exercising and hobbies and interests. We partnered with the Institute for Music for Children, a four-week online arts program. We featured two two-week daily sessions, free to Elizabeth students, and it served over 300 young people. Provided learning experiences and cultural enrichment, 529 diverse artistic engagements, acting and art and voice, African drumming, piano, hip-hop, step dancing, guitar, creative writing. We developed talents, enhanced skills, and we promoted expression, even though we did it virtually. The city's recreational activities continued online with impressive participation. Ballet, tap, flamenco dancing was available for young people via Zoom, 6 to 17 years old. We had funding from the Union County Kids Recreation Grant Program. Our recreation center and fields received renovations and upgrades. We added new attractions, strengthened our services, new spray park, playground, volleyball, basketball courts at Miller Playground, new playground kitchen and drainage improvements at the Hanny Riddy Field, bleachers and entrance mural drainage at the Ira Powell Little League Field, $115,000 in kids' recreation grant funds that will help ADA access. Elevating and enhancing playground experiences at Kellogg Park. Combining opportunities simultaneously faced the mind and the body. We partnered with the Elizabeth Public Library, enabling one free book 
to be distributed to residents with their meal program. We strengthen the community connections. We broaden horizons with the library, increasing access to its diverse catalog of information. 1,000 users of digital magazines, 3,000 users of Hoopla accessing movies, e-books, and audiobooks, e-audiobooks. More than 4,500 sessions of BrainFuse offering live online tutoring assistance. New initiatives include the availability of virtual library cards to 30,000 students in partnership with the Elizabeth Public Schools. A museum pass program, including Newark, Montclair, and New York museums, art centers, botanical gardens, lighting, plexiglass shields, and Wi-Fi expansion. New handicapped parking facilities were made possible by CDBG funds. We further assisted with challenges created by the pandemic in a $14,000 COVID-19 rapid response grant awarded to the Grotta Foundation. This will enable some Wi-Fi hotspots, laptop lending programs to be incorporate, incorporating by bridging the, bridging the digital divide. We continue to improve access to information, providing resources. Our Public Works Department remains committed to incorporating the infrastructure and the quality of life that we all deserve. Grant funds awarded through the Union County Infrastructure and Municipal Aid Program. A new parking lot will be constructed at the corner of Pine and Front Street, featuring new fencing, lighting, drainage, landscaping, increasing availability with vehicle capacity supporting visitors, improving access to recreational opportunities, the waterfront, the Todd Bowles Sports Complex, bike, hike, and roll throughway. We've utilized more than $1 million in NJDOT grant funds for new traffic signals, North and Monroe, North and Adams, ADA pedestrian crossing signals. And outdoor spaces have always been valuable within our community, but when COVID struck, they became priceless. And as far as the virus is concerned, as we all know, being outdoors is much safer. And strengthening these opportunities the Elizabeth River Trail Phase 5 is an exciting project. This will connect Clifton Street to the extension to the Gothels Bridge via a new bikeway walking path. I rode over that Gothels Bridge. It's going to be a lot of fun for all of us when we, this extension is continued. Expand alternate travel options for Staten Island and New Jersey residents. Increase in recreational and sightseeing opportunities. Completion is scheduled for this fall. You know, we have a Go Green initiative here in the city of Elizabeth and tree planting. We planted 887 trees last year with another 150 through the Greening Union County Grant Program. Naturally, that improves aesthetics and helps air quality. It reduces flooding, and most importantly, it helps assist our community in climate change initiatives. Rising unemployment and food banks throughout our community and our nation, we're seeing unprecedented numbers. Through produce grown, utilizing the Ag Lab, the micro farm located behind the Elmore Library, Groundwork Elizabeth was there to help. They donated food to local food pantries, the city and county programs, the coalition to house the homeless, Jewish family services. They provided seedlings to those in need. Through their newest initiative, Everybody gets a garden. Plants, soil, seedlings will be distributed throughout the community. They've improved food security, increasing access to fresh produce, supporting our community and encouraging healthier lifestyles. Grounds, grounds work continues to strengthen our municipality, infrastructure and open spaces, workforce development and green teams. And with extended closures, the loss of revenue, the inability to support their employees, hope for our business community was at an all-time low. So they provided assistance when it counted. The Department of Planning and Community Development allocated more than $2.5 million in HUD CARES Act, funding to 88 businesses here in our city, awarded more than $1.5 million 
in community development block grants, for rental assistance in food bank and child care, employment training, legal services, 300,000 to the Housing Authority in the City of Elizabeth for tenant-based rental assistance. We partnered with Habitat for Humanity, providing homeowners who meet income requirements and with necessary home repairs at no cost. Unprecedented job loss creates the need for more housing. Six new units on East Jersey Street, an additional three under construction. 12 units on New Point Road completed later this year. 12 more on Bank Street will begin construction. The Housing Authority is developing 60 housing units on 1st and 3rd Streets. 24 low-income senior housing at 170, 176 1st Street. Two affordable units on Fulton Street. Developed by the Coalition to House the Homeless, these initiatives support our efforts to strengthen all of us in this community. So as we look ahead to a new year full of hope and opportunity, we look ahead to a 2021 where we look for the future. Elizabeth's designation becomes a destination of choice to be elevated. New market rate housing, 640 new units, 100,000 square feet of office space. As part of the Baker Center redevelopment plan, new state-of-the-art warehouse on Newark Avenue creating jobs. 23 one-family homes as part of the Harborfront Villa project. 35 two-family homes on Trumbull Street, the Seaport Drive development. Construction underway for 85 units at Neck Lane and Coakley Circle. 274 new apartments at the former Elizabeth General site on East Jersey. And on West Jersey Street, across from Union County College, the Midtown train station, 267 market rate units, they'll be completed in May. Educational instruction, transportation, shopping, and our government center are just minutes away from the Vinti site. And this site includes a pool and fitness centers, indoor spa, dog park, recreation center, organic greenhouse, providing a luxury one-stop location. You know, regardless of what type of market or where the customers are shopping, Meeting all the demands can be challenging, especially in this ever-changing climate. The Mills at Jersey Gardens has overcome adverse conditions with the required closure, but they not only had a successful reopening, they continue to thrive. The Simon Youth Academy graduated its second class in June. They expanded services during the pandemic to include curbside, express parking. They introduced Spot Saver, with inline initiative, assisting customers during the holiday season. They welcome new stores, Abercrombie, Kids, New Balance, Adidas, Volcom, H&M, Auntie Anne's, haagen -Dazs. Some of them were expansions. They created more opportunities for our residents. You know, Albert Einstein once said, necessity is the mother of all invention. But in some cases, necessity requires a restoration of what once was. So the Parking Authority has worked with the state of New Jersey and Senator Scatari and Senator Krein, Assemblyman Holly and Assemblywoman Keanu to bring back the State of New Jersey Motor Vehicle Commission to our city. Previously located on the corner of Jefferson Avenue and West Jersey Street, construction has begun at 17 Caldwell Place. This office will operate on the first floor of the retail building and is scheduled to open this summer. The Parking Authority is updating its parking app with two new applications, creating a more user-friendly, seamless service, enabling quick and easy payment. Investments in our community are transforming lives and inspiring excellence. We're doing this through innovative approaches, the incorporation of state-of-the-art technology, and the increased community proactive initiatives. You know, crime in our city over the last year is down over 24% because we've improved the quality of life within our neighborhoods. We have high visibility details and strategic responses are reducing negative activities. Predictive policing analysis software is utilizing algorithms to calculate and avoid potential crime vulnerabilities. Installation of artificial intelligence 
and surveillance cameras throughout the city, increasing immediate access to information and the testing of the uh, Fusu Son system. It's a cloud-based, real-time crime center map, and it interfaces, it combines the private and public video streams along with our CAD data. Really fascinating to see how this works. The community-based programs are strengthening partnerships and positive interactions. The Community Affairs Bureau Safe Interaction Program, the Police Athletic League and the Elizabeth Mentoring Alliance, Faith in Blue, creating meaningful connections between police, faith leaders, and their congregations. Supporting our commitment to enhancing public safety and increasing resources, providing assistance, protecting our residents, 14 officers were hired in August. An additional 14 police officers will join the ranks of the Elizabeth Police Department this month. And along with 13 new firefighters, including our second female officer, will begin uh, this month as well. You know, there's a lot of hope for the new COVID-19 vaccine. It's being distributed through the state and the nation. In our city, we started last week through the collaborative efforts with the County of Union. We've received the vaccine. We've developed procedures. We've coordinated responses. We've identified vaccination sites. We're ensuring effective storage. We currently have three ultra cold freezers, two at the Dunn Center and one at Peterstown. We've acquired supplies and technology to aid in the vaccine distribution. We bought the cyrogenic gloves to assist in the proper handling of the vaccine, the PPE for vaccination, the data loggers to track the control of the freezers, the outreach protocols ready to be implemented, social media platforms, print media outlets, highlighting when residents can get vaccinated. We started with our EMS team last week and doctors, and we look forward to expanding the vaccines as we get more vaccinations. We have continued discussions with the state of New Jersey. We've conveyed that our community has all of the necessary resources, our nurses, the school nurses, our valued partners, to ensure an immediate and successful mass vaccination is achieved. We've done our part here in the city of Elizabeth to be prepared. All we need now is enough vaccine, and together we can close the door on this tragic chapter in the next couple of months. Keep in mind that restoring health and optimism once again is our priority. President Barack Obama once said, we choose hope over fear. We see the future as something not out of our control, but as something that we can shape for the better through concerted and collective efforts. It is with tremendous strength and hope and capability that we all stand together, willing and ready and able to continue leading the way to create a brighter and healthier future for our community. May God bless the city of Elizabeth and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you, Mayor Bullwich. While this officially concludes today's event, we have every reason to believe unparalleled seismic shifts will continue into 2021 and that businesses have much to look forward to as we begin to realign and recover under these unyielding circumstances. Please know your chamber is here to be of service. We look forward to your continued membership with our chamber so we can leverage each of our assets and resources, bringing us all together in one way or another collectively to forge ahead, elevating the business community of the city of Elizabeth, the County of Union and our surrounding area. As a gentle reminder, please make time to visit with today's event sponsors in the virtual business expo room. Also, be sure to stay up to date with the latest news and business resources. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. We value your time today and are grateful for your attendance. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon.
Thank you.